Welcome to another GED math video from ultimatealgebra.com. We will be looking at level two GED questions. Please, we encourage you to watch all our GED videos if you want to pass the GED. It's extremely important. Use the link in the description to go to the GED playlist. Let's look at question 51. In order to ship 2,500 gallons of a product to another country, Stand & Co. Shipping Company had to package the gallons into boxes. If they had 20 boxes and 100 gallons left, how many gallons were in a box? This kind of two-step equation word problem is very common on the GED. Unfortunately, most students get it wrong. We are going to make sure you don't get them wrong. You have three values in these type of questions. Let's write them down. We have 2,500 gallons. We have 20 boxes. And finally, we have 100 gallons. The 2,500 gallons represents the total. So we have equals 2,500. The 20 boxes is what I call the group. The gallons have been grouped into boxes. For most questions, the group can also be identified as the number that represents something different from the other two numbers. So here, 2,500 represents gallons. The 100 also represents gallons, but the 20 represents boxes. So the 20 will be the group. The group is the one with the X, so we will have 20X. We can now add the 100 gallons left to the equation and solve for the X in this two-step equation. Subtract 100 from both sides. These will cancel out. 2500 minus 100 will be 2400. We now have 20X equals 2400. Divide both sides by 20. The 20 will cancel out. 2400 divided by 20 will be 120. This means there were 120 gallons in each box. The hard part of this question is to be able to pull out the values from the word problem. Before we take our next question, please smash the like button to encourage us to post more free videos. If we don't know you like them, then we'll have no good reason to post more videos. Thanks. Now let's look at question 52. 235 students went on a school field trip. Five buses were filled and 15 students had to travel in cars. How many students were in each bus? You can pause the video and try it. We have to identify our three parts. The three numbers we have are 235 students, five buses, and 15 students. I'm sure you can identify all the parts. The total is 235 students. The group is students and buses. We said another easy way to identify this is that the two numbers represent students, but the group number represents buses. The value that was not part of the group was 15 students. So we can write our equation as 5x plus 15 equals 235. Now, we can solve the two-step equation. Subtract 15 from both sides. The 15 will cancel out. 235 minus 15 is 220. We have 5x equals 220. We can now divide both sides by 5. The 5 will cancel out. 220 divided by 5 is 44. That means there are 44 students on each bus. I'm sure you get the point here. Please, although this is the most common kind of two-step word problem, it is not the only kind. We will look at more in subsequent videos, so please subscribe and turn on your notification.
Let's look at our question 53. Here, we are supposed to solve for x given this rectangle. We know that the perimeter simply means adding all the sides. We know this is a rectangle, so opposite sides have the same size. This place will also be 2x plus 3. This will be 3x plus 7. Now, we can add all these parts and it must be equal to the perimeter 50. We have 3x plus 7 plus 2x plus 3 plus 3x plus 7 plus 2x plus 3. We can add all the x terms. 3x plus 2x plus 3x plus 2x. This will give us 10x. We can add the numbers. 7 plus 3 plus 7 plus 3. This will give us 20. We have a two-step equation here. Subtract 20 from both sides. The 20 will cancel out. 50 minus 20 is 30. Now we have 10x equals 30. We can divide both sides by 10. The 10 will cancel out. 30 divided by 10 is 3. So we have x equals 3. Question number 54. We are factoring the quadratic x squared minus 5x minus 6. You will find two numbers that multiply to get the constant. In this case, the negative 6. The two numbers must also add up to get the coefficient of the x, which is negative 5. This takes some trial and error and depends mainly on how good your multiplication is. The two numbers here will be negative 6 and 1. Negative 6 times 1 will be negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 will be negative 5. After finding these numbers, all you do is put them in parentheses with the x, and you are done. So we have x minus 6 and x plus 1. Please. This method works only if there is no number in front of the x squared. In math, we say the coefficient of the x squared is 1. Question 55 is similar. We want to factorize x squared plus 8x plus 12. We will find two numbers that multiplies to get the constant 12. The two numbers must also add to get the coefficient of the x, which is 8 here. The two numbers will be 2 and 6. 2 times 6 is 12, and 2 plus 6 is 8. So we will have x plus 2 and x plus 6 as our final answer. Question 56. Here. We are supposed to find the area of the given figure. The work here is to divide the figure into multiple rectangles and find the area of each rectangle. Then finally add the areas to get the area of the figure. So I'll draw a line here and also a line here. So let's label this rectangle A, B, and C. To find the area of rectangle A, we have the length of 2 times the width of 6. This will give us 12. To find the area of rectangle C, we have a length of 3 times a width of 5. This will give us 15. To find the length and width of triangle B requires a little bit of work. We know that from here to here is 6. Since in a rectangle, the opposite sides are equal. If the whole side is 6 and this is 4, 
then the side left will be two. We do the same for this side. Here, we have been given that from this point to this point is nine. We know that this side is two, and we also know that this side is three. So we can subtract two and three from nine to find out what this section is. Nine minus two minus three is four. Now we have our two dimensions. We multiply the two by the four to get eight. We add the area of the three, 12 plus 15 plus eight to get 35 as the area. Where you draw your lines is really up to you but you must make sure you find the sides after drawing the lines. I chose to draw my lines here and here. So I had rectangles A, B, and C this way. You could have chosen to draw your lines here and here rather. These will be your rectangles A, B, and C. If you find the areas of these three rectangles and add them, you will still get 35 as your answer. I actually think this will be easier. You can try it. Please ask questions if you don't understand anything. Let's look at our question 57. John loaned his roommate $2,000 at a rate of 4%. If the interest John received was $160, how long did it take the roommate to pay the loan? This is another common kind of word problem. This is a simple interest question. The formula for finding simple interest is the principal times the rate times the time. Here, the principal, which is the amount the roommate took, is $2,000. The rate is 4%. We can convert it to decimal as 0.04. We just did four over 100. The interest John received was $160. The time is what we are supposed to find. Let's represent it by T. Let's put the values we have into the equation and solve for T. So we will have 160 equals 2000 times 0 0.04 times T. 2,000 times 0 0.04 is 80. 160 equals 80t. We have a one-step equation. We will divide both sides by 80. This will cancel out. 160 divided by 80 is 2. Therefore, it took the roommate two years to pay the money back. Question 58. Here, we are supposed to find the area of the green shaded portion. Questions like this is also very common. The work here is to find the areas of the two shapes and subtract it. We start by finding the area of the rectangle. This is the length times the width. So we will have five times seven which is 35. Next, we find the area of the triangle. We know that it's base times the height over two. The base is three and the height is four. We have three times four divided by two. This will give us six. So the area of the shaded portion will be 35 minus six. This will be 29. For question 59, we are looking at a similar problem. We want to find the area of the green shaded portion. Again, all we have to do is find the areas of the two shapes and subtract them. Here we have a circle of radius five inscribed in a square. The formula for finding the area of a circle is pi times r squared. 
where r is the radius. So we have 5 squared times pi. This will give us 25 pi. The value of pi is approximately 3.142. So we have 25 times 3.142, which is 78.55. Now, we find the area of the square. The area of a square is the length squared. We have not been given the length, but we can find it. Since this is the radius, if we extend it to touch the other side of the square, we will have the diameter. The length of the diameter will be the same length of the square. The diameter is two times radius, which is two times five. The diameter is therefore 10. So the length of the square is also 10. Now we find the area. The area will be 10 squared. This will give us 100. Finally, we subtract the two areas to get the area of the shaded portion. We have 100 minus 78.55. The area of the shaded portion is therefore 21.45. Question 60. For question 60, we want you to try this and leave your answer in the comment below. Please leave a comment for us to know you actually tried it, even if you get the same answer as someone else in the comment. We will go over it in the next DED video. Please, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Watch out for our next DED video because we have a lot more to learn. Have a great day. See you in the next video.